we are in fact one we are in fact different aspects of this vast creation together we are enjoying the ups and downs the highs and lows the creativity in being human and so feel yourself in this moment tune in to your heart just imagine as if with your inner vision you are looking at your heart and the heart as you know is far more than just that simple organ it is a center of love it is an interdimensional space in the past many of you have said i want to get out of my head and into my heart no it is not about getting out of your head it is about integrating the heart just as we talked earlier about the male energy and the female energy which we have both aspects within you sometimes the male energy your energy is going out into the world you are doing you are active and then when you are meditating or in a receptive space is more of your feminine energy it is not one or the other your energies move with a different balance from moment to moment allow that to be the same with the head and the heart all is one just different ways of expressing as we sit here alkazar and pugit krayan and li we are one voice one message different words why different words why the need for many because you are all unique some people hear it when it is said one way others hear it expressed in a different way honor your uniqueness and honor the community of one we love you and we bless you we honor you greatly and we will talk to you again very soon greetings dear ones i'm cryon of magnetic service the room has been fully warmed up and ready for this message which is a continuation I want to remind you of something you are seeing already this week and you're going to see more of it that channeling requires the human psyche and the consciousness a scientist who channels will have a completely different kind of a channel than a guru and that is because the human is involved the experience the sight the awakening the the time spent in meditation all has an effect upon that which is the channeling i want to speak of prakit i want you to know more about the man Pragit is not the given name that he received at birth. 
It is a name that he received from a master of oneness. As a student, as one who sat at the feet of the master of oneness, that is where he got his name. Reflected within the channeling all day long has been the message that you can be one with everything. Did you hear it reflected in the channeling? You know, he even channeled a dragon. The oneness extends to everything. Consciousness is greater than three dimensions. And if you have a oneness, you are therefore in all dimensions at the same time. But there's more than that. Today's message, again, is a bit technical. And yet the explanation of oneness is something you need to hear. You need to hear it in a practical way, as well as the ways you've heard it all day long. I'm going to give you an exposure of several things, and I want you to pay attention. All of these things are currently or past happenings in that which you call India. Now, India would be the center of the teaching and the origin of oneness. Oneness was developed without a prophet. I want you to remember that as well. Number one, there's a man who sits with folded legs and he is one with everything. And what you see that is astonishing, perhaps, is that he's floating a little. He is actually suspending gravity. Some have called it levitation. And there's great laughter when you think of it, because this culture doesn't believe it. You might say, look, if we could know more about what he's doing, we could have anti-gravity. Dear ones, it's not anti-anything. If you questioned the guru, which you cannot at that moment, because he is one with everything. If you could question, he would say, because I am one with everything, I am one with the elements, with the physics. I'm one with the rules that would, would predict in, in formulas how things work. And yet, if you're one with everything, the formulas are meaningless. You are the formulas. There is a oneness there that is beyond anything that you can possibly imagine. And he's floating. He is one with the physics of the planet. And you might say he is therefore able to do whatever he chooses. Is that real? Number two. There's a man in a tree. And he's been there for some time. And the interesting thing about the man in the tree is that he is also cross-legged. He's balancing seemingly on a branch. But the interesting thing about the man is that he's been there for about a year. And he doesn't move. He doesn't speak. In this condition, he has slowed down his bodily functions. And he doesn't eat. He doesn't eliminate. He's even a little shade of green. He has become one with the tree. 
He received his complete sustenance in that state that he has chosen to be in, one with nature, where he doesn't need to eat as you do. From the air, from the tree, he receives all he needs, and he sits there. He may sit another year. Do you believe that? Number three. Before his passing, there was a man who greeted those who came to see him from all over the world with gifts. Thousands would sit at his feet and he would pass among them with a sleeveless shirt out of his hands. He would manifest gifts for them, small organic gifts, wood, plants, sometimes even stone, out of thin air. He would manufacture these and give them and give them and give them. There was proof. There were videos. There were documentaries. Did you see any of them? And the answer is no. You see, in your culture, it simply wasn't believable. But it was real. The man was invested in a oneness that made him one with the universe, with the dimensions. And when you're in that state, physics is not an issue because you are physics. You are the rules. You are all things. Number four, in the past, there was a man in a cave and the man could then put his hand on the rock and in a certain state of mind he'd say I am one with the rock and he could push his hand as far as he wanted to into the rock and it gave accordingly and there are yet today prints of his hand having pushed into the rock it is there for all to see. It has been documented. Did you see it? And the answer is probably not in this culture. There are things that are happening that show a oneness that I want to talk about. Because those listening to me now, apart from this room, need to know. Oneness is not what you think, dear ones. It's not an esoteric state of mind. It's physical. It's practical. And it is so far removed from what you were taught or what you believe that it's very difficult for you to understand. So I want to continue the idea of oneness by moving into the lesson that I have given before and I'm going to call it soul sharing revisited because this is the absolute oneness I speak of this is the engine of oneness let's look at something logically do you believe you have a soul and most would say yes and what is the soul if you could define it what is it and most would say, well, it is not actually part of a three-dimensional being. It somehow bridges the gap of dimensionality, and yet we have it. That's what a human would say. So they would admit that perhaps it's outside of your perception of what you think is real, but it's yours, and you have it. The next thing you would say is, do you believe that that soul is connected to what you might say is the other side of the veil in any way? And most of the planet who believes in the soul would say, yes, we do. But the soul, you see, is, is not just in the body. It has to be out of the body. So there's some kind of a connection with, with the creator. So far, so good. Then you would say, is it possible 
that that part of God that's supposed to be in you is the soul. And then there would be those who said, yes, this has to be it. It's, it's related to that which we call the higher self. It's a beautiful energy and it resides in all human beings. And here's where it gets good. Because most humans will then draw a line, a demarcation of thinking. And it goes like this. They would say, the soul belongs to me. And it's singular. And we don't understand it, but it's always with me. And then when I die, it goes someplace else and it comes back. And when I die, it goes someplace else and it comes back. It's always one thing. And where this falls short in logic is this. If it is a part of creation, it's a part of what you call God. You have no problems at all with having a billion people talk to God at the same time. All can be heard at the same time. Now that is a multi-dimensional aspect and you believe it. And yet when it gets to your soul, you draw a line. And you say, no, no, that's not possible, you see, with my soul because it belongs to me and I'm in 3D. Not understanding that if you are a piece of creation, the oneness that we speak of, the billion people who can all be heard at the same time, is in you. That is part of your existence. But because you're in three dimensions, because of the training, perhaps, that you have had that is spiritual, you draw a line and you say, well, that cannot be me and that would not be me. And dear ones, I tell you today, your soul is part of a mesh work, a pattern that belongs to everything. Soul sharing is the most difficult thing we have ever presented. The thing to speak of is so bizarre to most. If it's your soul, how can it be in everything? How can God listen to a billion prayers? You can't answer that in three dimensions. There is no logic on paper or even in your mind that can conceive of this. Your soul is everywhere. Is it yours or is it everyone else's? Yes. Of course it's yours. It's yours in the oneness of the, of the universe, which is also yours. This is not explainable. It belongs to you so fully, and it belongs to your children, and it belongs to your parents. It belongs to the trees. It belongs to the planet. It belongs to physics. It's in every single dimension. It belongs to the little people, and the dragons, and the mythology, and all of the multidimensional places that may have existed. It belongs to the stars, and those who command the stars. That's who you are. And so when you talk about oneness, it's a time for you to contemplate the practicality. Is it possible that you can be one with that which is around you so completely that humanity itself is part of you? You start to see, do you not, some of the masters who emulated the oneness and you start to see while flowers grew where they walked and animals followed them you start to understand that there was so much more there and what they were trying to tell you is that it's that way for you too you are not isolated in an older energy isolation was protection in a, a linear fashion Communities, cultures would surround themselves and compete for resources, the development of war. All of these things were because there were singularities here and there. A oneness did not exist. Now you start to understand that the oneness is the answer to peace on earth. Oneness is the answer to peace in your soul. Oneness is the answer to you controlling your chemistry. Oneness is yours. 
That's soul sharing. That means that a multidimensional human being sits in chairs in front of me. There is no limit to what you can accomplish and what you can do in this realization. More than esoteric, practical to the max, you'll live longer. If you start to understand, you're everywhere. You're beautiful. There's a lot of talk about love and compassion. If I told you that love was more than, than a feeling or an emotion, love actually is physics. You can feel it, and you know it. When two people fall in love, they go a little crazy. That's physics. I want you to claim it today. Here's what I want you to claim. You could say, I accept things I don't understand that are beyond that which I've ever been told. Not only am I magnificent, but inside me is the ability to be one with so much of what I never thought I could be with. I can be one with healing. I can be one with the chemistry. I can be one with physics. And because of that, I'm a master. And mastery means that I know myself. I know others. I know love. I know compassion. And others will see in me that which is the oneness of all things. That's why you came. To hear some of these things, to know more about them, to understand what you may have experienced today. For the teacher of Pragit speaks of the oneness of all things. That is the thrust. That is what he has learned. That is his name. And now you know. And now you know. Think of these things, not esoterically, but as practical. And so it is.